Hi everyone, Sarah here from Sarah Humphrey Embroidery. Welcome to another video. So in this one I'm going to look at some new threads. So these ones here, um, I've never used them before so I'm excited to have a go with them and see what they're like um, and I've also got some sets to give away to you too so that you can try them out for yourself and see if you like them. So hang around um, to see how to get your hands on those. So back in November of 2021, I went to the Harrogate Knitting and Stitching Show, which is a show here in the UK, and I came across a stand called Studio Flax. Now they do very beautiful um, linen threads and fabrics and kits, and I thought I've never used them, I'd really like to have a go with them. So I bought a set, so this is the set that I actually got for myself. Um, and then I got to chat to Tanya, who is the owner, and she was really interested in what I was doing and that I was making videos and wanted to get involved. So Tanya's very kindly, sent me some threads um, that I've got here. So there's four sets and these are going to go to you so that you can try them out too. So just before we have a look at these threads I just want to mention Tanya's Studio Flax website. I'll put a link in the description below the video to that so do go over and have a look at it because she's got a really interesting story. Um, Tanya's actually Swedish and these threads are inspired by threads from Sweden that she found some vintage threads and some vintage designs as well. Um, she's now in the UK. Um, she has a shop um, in Bristol. I'll put details for that below as well and she also sells online and ships worldwide so do check out her website for her really interesting story have a look at all the beautiful threads and kits she's got and if you're anywhere near Bristol you can go and see her shop too. So whenever I'm trying some new threads I could just get a bit of fabric and stitch a couple of stitches on it but it's not very interesting so I usually like to do it on an actual design so I've had a little rummage through my sketchbook and I found this little teapot design here a teapot and teacup um, and if you want to have a go at this I'll put this on the free stuff page of the website you can download that and you can have a stitch of that if you want to again description um, link in the description below if you want to have a go at that um, I'm going to work it on linen um, so I've been told by Tanya that these um, threads can fray quite easily so something with a more open weave is better so I'm not going to do it on cotton I'm going to do it on one of our linen um, fabric so that um, hopefully they won't do that. I've got my um, design on some stretcher bar frame so it's stretched nice and tightly ready to go and I'm going to hold that in one of these. Now I still get loads of questions people going what frame are you using? This is a versatile table clamp. We've got several videos on how to use this and they're for sale on the website as well so do check that, um, that out if you think that this looks really good and might suit you. Okay, so I'm all set up, ready to go. So let's have a look at the threads. Now the threads I've got here are her new contemporary range and these are based on some vintage linen colours, thread colours that she had. So this is her new range. There are others available. There are finer ones um, and there are different kinds of linens. I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but this is the range that I'm going to use. So I'm going to start with a pink one. So I'm just going to get the pink one out and we'll have a look at it. Now I do know that um, these are just wrapped around um, in a loop in a hank. So I'm going to get the label off and show you that. Okay, so just doing that carefully. I've not used them before, so I'm just going a little bit careful to see what it is. So you can see how these come in a big loop now. Now the stranded cottons, um, if you're not sure about those and haven't seen our video, we've got one up here all about stranded cottons. And on that, they're wrapped in a figure of eight, so you can find the end and pull the end through. Now these, you can't do that. So there's a couple of ways that you can deal with these. Um, so you can... Um, if you want to keep it as one length, um, you can find the end and then you can wrap it around um, a bobbin or a reel or something like that so you've got one length. But I'm going to do something that looks a bit drastic. <laughs> I'm going to cut right through these. So I'm going to find where the knot is. So it's got a knot there just holding all those threads together. I'm just going to cut through that knot. Carefully. So 
So there's my two ends. So I'm going to put the two ends at the bottom. I'm going to do this on this main camera so that you can see. Twist up a bit, but that's okay. And I'm going to put the scissors in the loop at the bottom where that knot was. And I'm just going to cut right across. Like so. Now that's quite a good length for stitching, certainly no longer. So I'm going to cut the other end as well. So those are all um, cut now. So cut at both ends. So that's the length of my thread that I've got to use. And then I can just fold that in half um, and I can either just put that back through the skein if I want to, um, or I can put that round a bobbin if I want to and then if I want to thread all I need to do is just pull it out the top and I've got a thread ready to use and to stop that all tangling up I would probably just um, plait that or braid that very loosely and that stops that all getting in a knot so a really good way to deal with any thread that comes in that form um, if you don't want to cut it <laughs> it's a bit too drastic you can just um, wrap it around um, a spool or a bobbin and use it like that but I'm going to use that method that works for me every time so I've got my piece off so let's um, thread it and see what it looks like OK, so when I was chatting to Tanya, she suggested um, a 22 chenille needle. So that's one of these here. If you're not familiar with it, it's like a tapestry needle, um, but with a point on it, not a blunt end. Um, but it has a very long, thin eye. And that just helps these fibres to spread out a bit and doesn't squash them and take them through the fabric. Now, this does seem to me like a massive needle. It's bigger than I would use for most projects, but I've never used this thread before. So I'm going to follow Tanya advice and try this needle and see how I get on. I have got a couple of others that I might try just to see what the difference is and um, just to satisfy my own curiosity but this is the needle Tanya suggested so we're going to go with this one. This threads nice and easily. Um, if you haven't cut your thread by the way and you want to just cut a length keep it fairly short just fingertip to the elbow is good length no longer than that because it does start to damage the thread. I'm going to put a knot in the end because that's how I start all mine. So let's see what this looks like. Now it feels quite rough, which I'd expected it to. It's linen. Um, I'm just going to start at the top of the teapot and come around here in a fairly simple stitch. I'm just going to do a back stitch. If you're trying a new thread, don't try anything too complicated to get going. Just try something you're very familiar with so that you can compare it. So two little knots to start, that knot will get cut off later, so that's my waist knot. Feels quite nice actually, it feels a bit smoother than I was expecting. So come up there. Now I can see, hoping you can see that on the camera, some little fibres just coming off the thread there, so it's that sort of thing you need to watch. If I go any smaller with my needle, they might be the bits that cause the problem, so I'm going to stick with this needle that Tanya has suggested. Just going to do a simple back stitch. So that needle, because it's a bit larger, it makes the hole in the fabric for the thread to pass through. You don't want the thread to make the hole because then it makes a nasty noise and destroys the thread. So you want the needle to make the hole, which this one is doing quite nicely. You can hear that thread going through there, but it feels okay. I have got a backing behind my linen, so that will make a difference. We do have a video on that if you want to know why I use backings behind them. So do have a look at that one. But it's going through quite nicely with this needle actually. It seemed like it was massive but it's going along quite nicely. So I'm quite liking that thread. It is rougher than any other thread that I've used. It's sort of coming out quite bobbly. It's quite rustic I suppose I would say. Which I quite like. So I'm just going to work my way around here with this stitch and get used to the thread. And then we'll come back and see what that looks like. OK, so just to satisfy my curiosity, really, I'm just going to try a different size needle. So this is down one size. So it's still a chenille needle, but it's a number 24, which is smaller. So I'm going to just try this just to see how it feels and what the difference is. I'm getting along quite nicely with the other one but if I did want to do it on a finer fabric I'm not sure how that would work so let's do a few stitches with this one. 
partly I think just because I'm used to small needles, the big one goes, oh, it's a bit scary, but that feels pretty good actually. It's very tough thread, linen thread. Um, although there is the little fibres coming off it, it actually feels pretty good. It doesn't feel like it's wearing at all, really. And that might be because of the needle, but this feels like it's going through okay as well, actually. I'm running out of thread now, so I should stop it there. And I'll finish that in the same size needle, and then I'll decide which one I like the best at the end. So I'll just swap my thread over now to finish that last little bit. So I'm just finishing off this little section. This is the chenille 24 and I actually quite like it. So I would say either works well. I just like a fine needle because that's what I'm used to. Um, the big one worked well, but the little one um, is working okay as well. It doesn't seem to be having an effect on the thread. And as long as you don't use too long length anyway, which you shouldn't do anyway, um, I think the other size is fine. So I would say yes to both of those sizes, but you could try them out and see which one you like the best. So I've been all the way around with that. That's my waist knot so I can cut that off. Those two little stitches and the stitches over the top will hold that securely in place. So I want to have a go at another stitch now. I'm going to do a satin stitch in here because I'm told that this thread looks really lovely in satin stitch. It goes nearly sh really shiny. So let's try that in this um, teapot lid. So I'm going to start my thread in the same way. Now I'm just going to put my starting notch right in the middle of the shape because I'm going to cover it all up. I'm using the 24 chenille just to see how I get on with that. And I'm going to put an outline around this so I'm just going to start right on that edge. It's always good to start in the middle with this stitch just to set that angle. I'm actually going to do more of a laid work I think than a satin stitch because that uses a lot of thread. So I'm just going to come up and down on the same side, so down on that side, up on this side, because I'm putting an outline around it as well, that will just neaten the edge off. But it has the same look as a satin stitch on the front, and it's that that I want to do so we can have a look and see how beautifully this shines, because I'm told if you just give it a little rub, it's all experimenting, I've never done this before, so too sure how it's going to come out so I'll fill the shape in first and then we'll see what that looks like at the end. Okay so I'm just on that last little section now finishing my laid work. If you want to know what any of these stitches are by the way we've got a really extensive stitch library if you want to know the difference between laid work and satin stitch then it's all in there do go and check that out to have a go at these stitches so I'm not going into them too much detail here so I just want to try the thread. That's the last little bit so that went in really nicely actually very nice thread to use. I'm surprised it um, feels as smooth as it does actually. I'm just going to finish it off on the front just because I can't turn my frame over you can turn your frame over and finish it on the back but I'm going to do that for ease. And then I just want to try this method that I've been told about to make this nice and shiny. Just hide the end there. So I'm told if I just rub the top of it, so I kind of burnish it, I guess, that it'll go nice and shiny. So let's try that. So I've just got my needle. Just rub across the top. It definitely has an effect on it. It does make it shiny. I don't know why I'm surprised at that. <laughs> that, I should be a bit more trusting, but yes, I'm just sort of burnishing the top and that's just making the fibre sit more flat, I guess, and that is making it nice and shiny and just sort of stitches are blending in a little bit with each other. So it works. I have learnt something new today, which is great. I love learning new things. So yeah, so if you just burnish the top of it, be careful not to stick the needle in it and pull it up. Um, it does have a different effect. It does make that nice and shiny. So that's brilliant. So we tried two stitches. So I'm going to try some more um, finer stitches here just to see how the thread behaves with something a bit smaller. But before I do that, let's have a look at those threads and see how you can get your hands on them. So let me show you what we've got to give away first, courtesy of Tanya from Studio Flex. So she's given me two of these packs here. 
show you under this camera so that you can see them here so this has got a set of five threads in it it's got a needle in it as well so you don't need to buy a needle you're all ready to go um, so there's two of those those are the same um, and the card behind I just want to mention this card show you that here so I've got one here so this is one of the original designs that Tanya found that she rescued in a pattern book and again you can read all about that on her website so she's included one of those as well so you can use that for inspiration for your kits as well or your projects or whatever you want to use that for so that's really nice that comes with it too so there's two of those packs and then we've got two of these boxes I'll show you inside this one these are the same really beautifully presented so there's three needles in that one there for you to use I open it up there's a really lovely selection of linen threads in here and we've got some different ones as well so we've got a much finer one here so you can do some more, more fine stitching with that one we've got some vintage ones as well here so some original ones really beautiful condition gorgeous turquoise color there and there's another fine one here as well um, and I think this one is one that strands it is so this is like a stranded cotton there's four strands to this one so you can take that apart so there's lots of different kinds of linen for you to have a little play with so a little box of goodies there so there's two of those so the first two names out of the hat will each win one of the box sets and then the next two names you'll win one of the packs of threads. So we've got four prizes to give away so lots of chances to do that so how do you um, have a go at winning these? All you need to do is to leave a comment below this video um, and include the words Studio Flax. I'll put that on the screen now. You need to spell it exactly like this because our random winner generator will look for those words. If you don't spell it right, you won't be in with a chance. Um, so do join in. Just include those words in a comment below the video. So this video is going up on the 28th of January and we're going to give you two weeks this time to enter. So we will do the draw for these um, sets of threads on the 11th of February, Friday the 11th. We're going to do it first thing Friday. So your comments need to be in by then, please, if you want to have a go at winning these threads. So do make sure that you check your comments on Friday the 11th because we will respond to your comment if you're one of the lucky winners. So you won't get um, to get your threads if, we don't, if you don't know that you've won. So do make sure you check that out and we will send them out to you free wherever you are in the world. If you can't wait um, to see if you've won or not and you want to buy some threads now, Tanya is very kindly making up some sets of threads just for you. So just for Sarah Humphrey Embroidery viewers, um, she's going to make a set based on the ones that we've got here for you. Um, she's going to do your discount code on that as well. So you can get to that by clicking on the link below the video. That will take you straight there. Um, so do go and look at those and check those out before they're all gone. I'd hate you to miss out so that you can have um, a set of these to try just for yourself. OK, so let's go back to the teapot and try out some more stitches um, with these lovely threads. So I'm going to try one more stitch on this um, and I'm going to try a woven wheel, just something a little bit different to see how that comes out. But I just want to mention about this threads. Now, I'm quite familiar with linen fabric um, and I know if you get a crease in it, it's really hard to get the crease out. And I'm just looking at these threads. I've cut it. And I can just see where it's sort of been bent over the top of the skein and it kind of sticks like that. It um, it's quite hard to get the creases out of linen. It's got very short fibres in it. Um, and once they crease, they crease. So if you're um, going to use this, I suggest using it like this and probably leaving it as it is and not wrapping it around something. If you do want to wrap it around something, use a reel that's round and doesn't get kinks in it because I think they're going to stick in it um, and you'll find that hard to get out. So just something worth mentioning, just because I'm familiar with linen fabric and there's no reason why linen threads would be any different. So I'm going to do a woven wheel here using the smaller needle again. Just do my starting stitches inside because we're going to cover that up. And it's quite good to see how it reacts with different kinds of stitches. Just going to guesstimate the middle. I think it's about there. Because different stitches will have different effects. It will behave differently. So let's just do something a bit finer and see what happens. So we have videos on these as well. If you like these, I think they look really pretty and you want to know how to do that, then check out woven and whipped wheels. I'm going to do a woven one. So that needs an odd number of spokes. So there's four 
And there's five. I can hear that thread going through. Every time it goes through and you can hear it, it is the thread sort of wearing a bit. So I'm just going to keep an eye on an eye on that. And if I feel that thread starting to get a bit tired or to get a bit frayed, then I'll stop and change it for a new one. So I'm just going to go over and under quite tightly. And hopefully, like the, the laid work, the satin stitch, this will create a nice surface. Because it's just piling these woven rows on top of each other to make a really nice texture. Let's see what that looks like. Goes in quite quickly. It's quite a thick thread. This, I suppose, it's equivalent to maybe three strandeds, two or three strandeds. Can't strand this one. I'm not sure if I said that at the beginning or not. Um, it's twisted. You use it as it is. You don't take this one apart. There are other linens that turn yourselves that you do, but this one that you don't. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned that. So this one, do not strand this one, just use it as it is. It's got a twist to it, that's the way you tell. It's been twisted up and ready to use straight off the skein, this one. Do you really like these threads? I have to be said, they're going much smoother than I thought they would. I kind of thought they might be a bit rougher than that, but they're not really nice to stitch with. They're not wearing at all. Really nice and sturdy. Filling quite quickly as well, because they're a little bit thicker. Let's get that knot out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. Over that one, under that one. can damage it where you take it through the eye of the needle so just move it occasionally just to stop it doing that that's good practice with any kind of thread really so let's just go around once more with that finish that off in there yeah, not wearing at all that thread. Really impressed with that. So that's a little woven wheel. I'm liking it. Really pretty. Um, so I've got a couple more to do and then we're going to finish off the rest of the teapot. I'm not going to do that on the camera because it isn't really a video about this project. It's about these threads. So I'm going to do the rest. Then I'll come back and just give a little conclusion as to what I think. Don't forget, if you want to have a go at this, it's on the Free Stuff page on our website. And I will put all the colours and the stitches that I've used on that as well if you want to do it the same way that I am. So then I'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like when I've finished. So I finished my little teapot project I'll just talk you round it to show you what I've done so I've done the same in the teacup at the bottom so the same stitches um, I've done a bit more satin stitch here so I just thought it might actually be good to try my malaw because the needle was digging in a little bit so I'm going to make it shiny again and I've got this malaw so that's my laying tool it's actually gold work laying tool but it's great for lots of occasions as um, I'm about to demonstrate now so Let's just try it with that because it's not sharp, so it's not going to dig into the threads. So I'm just going to give that a rub. Definitely changes the, the thread, definitely makes that more shiny. I like it. So I think one of those is useful. We've got those for sale in the shop, so check those out. Um, what else have I done on here? Let's just look, look around. So I've done some more of these uh, woven wheels. And I've done some little detached fly stitches. No, they're not. They're detached chain stitches. <laughs> they're my stitches by now. Um, I'm going to demonstrate a few of those before I go. So then I've shown you every stitch that I've used. So I did the satin stitch um, and some more back stitch up to connect it to the teapot. And I'm going to leave this quite simple just to show you what the threads can do. So let me show you those last few stitches up here. So just detached chains. I'm going to do three. So let's make sure we're nice and tight. So up and down on the point of the leaf. 
going to come up inside that loop and attach it onto the flowers. So I'm really impressed actually with this thread and how small details it can do. I actually made the design kind of thinking I'd need a bit of a bigger design because I thought this thread looks a bit thick um, and I'm not sure what it will do, but it will do really nice small details. So very pleasantly surprised about how detailed I can get these stitches if you're used to using one or two strands of a stranded this seems very thick but it isn't you can get lots of details in there so last one just doing three individual stitches they look like little leaves just to finish this design off down there I'm going to weave that through on the back and we are done um, so just a couple of thoughts about this thread so I thought initially as I said that it was a bit a bit thicker than I'm used to maybe and it was going to be a bit rough and, and it was going to shred um, and it's done none of those things <laughs> I'm really pleasantly surprised it's not a thread you would usually stitch with silk or cotton is, is the most common so sort of to try linen you think oh yeah you know that's a that's a little bit different kind of a thread to use but um it's as tough as anything. If you're somebody who breaks your thread a lot for whatever reason, um, this is the thread for you. It goes on and on and on. It didn't fray. It didn't damage. Um, it didn't, the little bits didn't come off it, didn't break. Um, I defy anyone to break this thread. Um, so really, really tough thread, but, um, it still looked beautiful. It was still doing those really small details, which I was really impressed with. Um, and it stitches beautifully. Feels really smooth. Um, I think having the right size needle is going to make a big difference to that. Um, so I was really impressed with it. And I'm definitely going to use it some more in the future. Colours are beautiful. Um, really striking colours as well. So overall, really impressed with this thread. Um, it's tough. It's durable. It looks beautiful. And it's easy to stitch with. So you can't really go wrong. So I hope you've enjoyed that little journey with me into using linen thread, something a little bit different for me. Don't forget to have a go at our giveaway and see if you can win a set for yourself. We've got four to give away, so we're excited to give those to you and to see what you think about them. And check out um, the Studio Flax website as well. Lots of interesting information in the story on there about how she got started and how that came about and loads and loads of gorgeous colours and other stuff there. So do check that as well. Um, all of the information I've talked about is below in the description. There's a lot of stuff there, but it's all there. We'll make sure you can easily understand what it is. So do check that out as well um, and follow those links to those different uh, resources that we've mentioned. And I will see you on the 11th of February 2022 for the draw to pull out the winners. <laughs>